So the ubiquitous OS for any Z80 system is CPM. It's old, its code is freely available, and there's a ton of software out there for it, which makes it a perfect fit for a homebrew computer. CPM doesn't really have any direct modern ancestors, but some of its mechanics were copied by MS-DOS, which would become Windows, and you know the rest of the story. So what can it do? Well, the most interesting thing to me was MS Basic, which was one of the first Microsoft products they ever sold. There's plenty of source code out there for basic programs, which gives you a lot to play with. One of the best known games for BASIC was a strategy game based on Star Trek. There are other standalone games like Sargon and text adventures like Zork or the Colossal Cave Adventure. Programming languages got ported too. You can find compilers for C, Fortran, COBOL, and a few others. Have you ever seen Hello World compile at 8 MHz? For comparison, here's what it looks like on my laptop. That's the thing about CPM. It's a single tasking monolithic kernel. It has no memory management and no concept of swap memory like a more modern operating system. It's very easy to run out of memory if you try to open a file that's too big, hence why actually developing code on it can be a real pain. It's cool to see an operating system that can be fully understood with only a few hours of work. I could make a whole video about porting CPM if there's demand for it, but it's not really that hard, and there's already a couple of good guides out there. But what about other operating systems for the Z80? There are a couple, most of them following the same design as CPM. A lot seem like hobby projects that were written for fun or for a very specific platform. It would be cool to run a Unix-like system though, and there is one called Fuzix that takes a bit more effort to port, but it's well worth it. Fuzix is a multitasking operating system that can run Unix programs from the shell. My port isn't finished yet, but I can get into the shell and poke around the file system, and that alone is pretty cool. Fuzix doesn't have nearly as much software available, nor does it have the install base of CPM, but it is an active, living project that's been going on for a few years now. It's already been ported to dozens of platforms, including most 8-bit CPUs in some form or another. If you've used a Unix-like system before, it'll feel familiar with most essential programs included. It also includes a handful of text-based games that you can play around with. As much fun as it was porting a more demanding system like Fuzix, I started to see the failings in a lot of my design choices, though. So last I want to talk about what didn't go well with this project. I wanted to highlight the mistakes that I made so that others could learn from my poor decisions. The biggest hang-up I have in this project is using the propeller chip. The Parallax propeller is not a bad microcontroller, it's just not a good choice for this project. After working for 6 months now, my scope has changed. VGA and PS2 keyboard input are not as important to me now as they were at the start. I didn't even bother to solder new connectors onto the revised board because all the extra effort just didn't seem worth it. The upside to the trade-off with the propeller is that it abstracts away the need to write drivers for devices directly on the Z80. The downside is that interfacing between the two chips is slow, especially with regards to disk I.O. Developing for the propeller could also be a maddening experience at times because of the clunky user interface. Alternatively, I could have just used the PIO directly as an SD card interface and written SPI and file system drivers myself. Easier said than done, obviously, but it's not impossible. Another thing I might change was the use of the 16550 UART rather than the Z80 SIO chip. I wasn't aware of the SIO when I began this project, and by the time I realized it was a better option, I was already finalizing the board layout. Both of these chips would work, but the SIO has the advantage of being designed for the Z80 specifically. I don't know if the DIP package 16550 are even manufactured anymore, so I feel bad using them if I know there's a limited supply left. One positive surprise was the micro SD card slot. I expected the soldering process to be hell, but I did it by hand with a soldering iron and it worked on the first try both times. If I had a hot air gun or an oven, I'd trade for that, but it can be done aided by a magnifying glass and some tape. 
That's all I can really think of to say right now. I glossed over a lot of the finer details about porting CPM and Fuzix, so if enough people want a more in-depth account of anything I talked about here, let me know. As always, if you want to follow my work, I have a GitHub repo with all my code. And until next time, thanks for watching.